Hey guys, Dave for Gamers on Games here. Uh, I'm actually really excited about this episode. We're going to be showing you guys how to play Battletech. Now, for me, this is actually going to be a little bit more of an emotional cleanse, just because um, this is actually the first war game I ever really played. I have fond memories of uh, long vacations in Florida spent playing a three-player game of this with my brother and my father. A uh, two-week vacation that turned into probably about four days of playing this and two days of arguing. <laughs> so, um, I hope you guys enjoy this and I get, hope this means as much to you as it does to me. Uh, we're going to be covering a lot, not just how to play, but I figured I'd go a little bit more into what you can expect from Battletech. So, without further ado, here we go. Gamers on Games is sponsored in part by MinMax Games, gaming to the max. For those who don't know, Battletech is a long-standing franchise. Uh, it was originally created by FASA, and it was originally titled Battle Droids. But after some interference from George Lucas, they changed it from Droids to Battletech. Well, after that, you then had a whole uh, confrontation with the various mechs that are actually in there. But this didn't stop the game. It then proceeded to actually spawn several computer games, including MechWarrior 1, MechWarrior 2, and its two expansions, Ghost Bear Legacy and Mercenaries, as well as MechWarrior 3, 4, and its expansions. But it didn't stop there. There were also tactical games that actually emulated the actual on-table play. This would include Crescent Hawk's Inception, Crescent Hawk's Revenge, Mech Commander, and Mech Commander 2. The franchise expansion doesn't limit itself just to the video games. There were also countless novels, a TV series, card games, and even a clicks edition. But we're not here to talk about that. What we're going to in fact show you is how to play the tabletop edition. Now what I have is actually two of the classic FASA editions, as well as one of the WizKids publications. As far as I understand, Catalyst Games currently owns the license and is doing all the publications for it. I played a recent edition of this at Dexcon. However, it didn't seem to particularly differentiate anything from the original game that I used to play. Obviously, they were playing with expanded rules, but I'm going to just show you the basics. So what is Battletech? Battletech is a science fiction tactical war game revolving around the 31st century. After the fall of the Great Star League, which basically is this, you know, semi-utopian uh, era of the uh, Battletech universe, you have the five successor states, making up the Inner Sphere. This is about the 3025 era, and all these houses are fighting to become the new successor of the actual original Star League. Their weapons of war are these colossal war machines, giant biped and quadruped vehicles known as battle mechs. These are the stars of the actual game. And these things kind of look, well, something like this. Yeah, this would actually be the Marauder from the actual Battletech universe. This is one of the classic uh, 3025 mechs, uh, mounting two PPCs, Two medium lasers and a uh, AC-5 up on top. Very classic, very iconic for the actual game. Um, as the successor states continue their wars, war after war after war for over 300 years, you have the invasion of the clans. The clans are led by the descendants of Kerensky, which is this amazing general who left the Star League when he saw the whole thing was falling apart. And they come back claiming ownership of everything and just just basically dominating the entire inner sphere. The inner sphere's tech is old, it's weak, and the clans are fresh, strong, and carrying long forgotten technology and improved technology, including extended range lasers, extended range particle cannons, what's known as an ultra auto cannon, which fires faster and harder. Uh, you have the LBX auto cannon, which fires like a shotgun. 
they also have improved armor and improved interior structures. All this amounts to is the clans are better equipped than the Inner Sphere. As they go through, they mount and mount and mount. Well, how do these battle bikes get from planet to planet if this is this giant intergalactic war? They're deployed using these giant balls and these giant dropships that carry legions of these mechs, infantry, and tanks, and vehicles, and just everything you would ever need to mount a full-scale invasion. Amazing, amazing stuff. So now that you have a general idea of the basics of what the game is about, let's actually get into the game itself. Before we can play the game itself, the first thing we need to do is go over the core components of the game itself. We're going to start with the Battletech record sheet. The record sheet will show you all the critical information you need to know, starting with the unit's name, the unit's tonnage, and its tech base, its movement rate, including walk, run, and jump, and its impressive armament. Here we see the pilot data. This tells you gunnery skill, piloting skill, and hits taken. This is the critical hit table. This will show you how to allocate critical hits when they occur. This is the armor diagram. This shows you how much damage the unit can take. This is the internal structure diagram. This tells you the amount of damage the internal structure can take. This is your heat data. This tells you what the various heat level effects are and how they work. This is the heat track. This is how you actually track your heat in game. So in addition to the record sheets, what you'll also find inside the box are going to be dice, some sort of counters, generally either punch outs or plastic miniatures. Then you get to the books. This being the Wiz Kids edition, you get a copy of the classic Battletech universe. This book actually outlines the universe as it progresses, as we described earlier. This one obviously will give you more detail than I would in a brief summary. Includes more information on the actual houses, mercenary factions, and other powers. They also provided a copy of the actual universe of the Inner Sphere. I'm not going to unfold this map, but trust me, this unfolds into the entire universe. They then would provide a basic rulebook, a quick start rules, And then you have maps. As the game is very hex reliant, it gives you a hex map and it gives you two of them. They are the same map, but by arranging them in various configurations, you can make for different scenarios and different maps.